Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, welcome to a baking session. Um, I'm going to try and do, like I said in the last video with uh, Glenn Pennell's book, I'm going to try and do different books, different recipes. Um, and in this case, it was a lazy Sunday, just enjoying uh, a book that I've had probably for about five or six years now uh, called Lily Vanilli's Sweet Tooth. And I believe Lily Vanilli uh, is a, like a cake shop in uh, East London. So next time I'm down in London, I'm definitely going to check it out, especially if the cakes look as good as they do in the pictures here. Every cake just looked fantastic. There's cakes, tarts, biscuits, loads and loads of stuff to look at. So I'll let you enjoy. So I decided to use my Twitter to do a poll to decide which cake to make from the book. Um, it's kind of a nice way of letting the public decide what kind of cake they want to see on the videos. And uh, this one here is the red velvet layer cake, uh, which I was really tempted to make. Um, I've never actually had a red velvet cake before, so um, that was something I really wanted to do. Um, but at the same time, I saw the zebra cake and I thought, look, I've got to put this up against the red velvet, see what comes out on top. Both cakes look stunning. Both are actually quite easy to make in terms of ingredients and methods. So um, yeah, it was the zebra cake in the end that won. So I had a slight issue when I was going to be making the cake and that's that the molds that, or the, the tins I should say, that uh, Lily Vanilli uses are 15 centimeters wide. Now I only had one 20 centimeter uh, cake tin, which wasn't ideal. So uh, this is just butter and sugar. It's a base for the sponge, uh, the same as you'd make for any sponge, pretty much. Um, I am using a stand mixer for this, but you can just use a wooden spoon or you could just do it with like a hand whisk or something. Um, as long as it's creamed together, you're on the right track. So once the butter and sugar have been creamed together, it's just adding eggs one at a time. I think in total there are about four eggs, um, but this was going to be a three tier cake. So we needed a lot of sponge for right, obviously to make three tiers and three tiers at 20 centimeters as well. So I had to kind of factor in that extra sort of uh, that extra width. Um, this is where the recipe got kind of complicated because there's two different bowls here, as you can see, where I've just split the mixture 50-50. And then you have to split the dry ingredients 50-50 as well. And that kind of threw me a bit because I thought, surely you just make one big batch of sponge and then split it 50-50, add the cocoa powder, which you'll see in a minute, to make the uh, the dark sponge, to make the zebra stripes. But that was the way Lily put it in the book. So that was it really. I just had to go with it. So once I'd mixed up the cocoa sponge, which was kind of easy, it was just the base sponge with cocoa powder. There's a really weird layering technique for the cake. I had to reread this about two or three times. Um, you place about two or three tablespoons, or in my case, spatula fulls of the uh, white mixture. And then you put about just under the amount of, uh, the same amount, sorry, of uh, the chocolate sponge mixture. Um, and this layered up will kind of create that zebra effect. It doesn't look like it at the moment, but stick with it and you'll see exactly what I mean.
So once the cake mix is all in, it kind of fills the tin naturally. And I really wasn't prepared for this. I didn't think I was going to have enough as well. As you can see in the bowl, just to the left hand side, I was struggling a bit for mix. But once I baked it, it came out looking like this and it was absolutely brilliant. I was actually really excited to bake the second sponge. Um, I did at this point think I was only going to get two tiers worth of the cake out. But actually you'll see in a bit how I managed to get three tiers out of the two sponges. And here I'm just making the buttercream icing, which is basically just butter that's been whipped up uh, with my hand whisk this time, not the stand mixer. And uh, it's basically butter, icing sugar, a little bit of double cream there as well, just to help with the white color because it's kind of meant to be like an ivory icing and a bit more vanilla as well, just for extra flavor. Honestly, like this tasted just like a professional cake shop, uh, buttercream um, and I'd definitely use it on future cakes um, you can see here as well it sort of gets thicker and thicker as the icing sugar goes in um, which is kind of weird because it's just the same amount of butter um, a little bit of cream here and there but the volume just increases like crazy so um, definitely a really good buttercream recipe from just a few ingredients So I'd bake the two sponges and one had kind of risen higher than the other, which was perfect because that meant I could then slice it in half and then I'd have three tiers, just like the Lily Vanilli original cake. And look at this as I slice into it. It looks like a bullseye board. It looks so good and it's just like a zebra stripe on the horizontal as well, as you'll see obviously when I cut the cake. Now this bit was kind of daunting because um, the buttercream, I looked at it and I thought there might not be enough there and as time went on, I was right. There wasn't actually enough and I had to whip up quickly a second batch off camera. Um, but basically all the, the cake involves in the building process is just uh, putting buttercream on the layer each time, sticking it down, uh, reapplying it, building the layers like that, and then just icing all over. So it is quite a simple cake to do really. And if you are an inexperienced baker, it's actually not too bad of a cake to start off with. So I was actually really happy with the result. Um, looking at it, I thought I'd done a pretty good job considering I've not really baked a cake like this for a long time. Um, obviously I had to whip up that second batch of buttercream. And honestly, after a little while in the fridge just to re-firm up the, uh, the buttercream, digging into the cake was so exciting. And as you'll see, the pattern in the middle is just ridiculous. Like, it actually tastes as well just like a high-end cake shop cake. It doesn't taste like a home-baked cake. So in terms of the book, I'd highly recommend that you buy it and make a few things from it. I'm definitely gonna make more from it. Um, just drop it in the comments if you'd like to see me make more from this book, or if you've got any baking books that you think uh, I might have or um, I might be interested in, uh, drop it in the comments and uh, I'll definitely consider it. Um, and keep an eye on my Twitter polls, Facebook polls, like I say, all my uh, details and my uh, social media are in the description box below and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.